Now it is time for some quick hits to extend our parser. First open up your AST package and create a boolean expression type that extends expression node. It contains a token and a boolean value. In the parser package, add the parse boolean function, which just creates a boolean expression. Then register the true and false tokens with this expression in the prefix expression function map. Next up, we need to be able to handle expressions with parentheses. First, associate the left side parens with the parse grouped expression function. Then, write that function as follows. The idea is that we short circuit the entire process by calling parse expression with a value of none to make sure that the full expression within the parentheses is parsed. Next, we'll do something a little bit harder, conditionals. In our language, if and else branches don't only act as a control flow for code, they also evaluate to true or false values. Intuitively, we are used to looking at if statements as structures of the following form. The consequence and alternative sections are really just blocks of code statements with assignments, expressions, etc. that we have largely handled thus far. Good news is that we can follow our same pattern of defining a node and then creating a parser for that particular node. Start by creating a structure to represent these blocks of statements. Call it statement block. We will use this to build the if expression. Then, in our parser, we will start with the ability to parse statement block. If you look closely, you will notice that this is essentially the same thing as our parse program method. We are just iterating over the statements until we run into our closing scope at the right bracket. Now let's build the parse if expression method up until the consequence block, which will execute if the condition evaluates to true. This should be straightforward. When we consume the first parens, we parse the condition expression. We consume the trailing parens. We then parse the left bracket to start our consequence scope. Now let's code the rest to execute the alternative path if there is one. This should be easy to read as well. We check if we have an else token, and if we do, we consume the first bracket and then call parse statement block to populate the alternative path. And with that, we have some nice, and with that, we have extended our parser in important ways. In the next video, we are going to learn how to parse function calls. See you there.